Because these bearing clearances are so tight, we've got to make sure that all of the bolts are down to spec. And with that done, we're on to the next job. Next step, the con rod and the piston is going to go in. But what you should replace are the actual rings. So these rings like seal the gap as it goes up the cylinder. These are really rusty. So we are actually going to replace them, but we've not got new ones because you can't buy them new. You have to buy an entire piston, which is over 700 pound per piston. We could regret that, but what we're going to do is going to take these off, these uh, old rusty ones off like this, and we're going to pop them down and we're going to use the piston rings, which have already been inside that cylinder block. Yeah, first we've got to get all these off and then clean up these pistons. Let's go. The idea of the piston rings are to completely seal the gap between the piston and the lower half of the engine. These are vital for the compression of the engine. If the piston rings aren't doing their job, then you could get oil into the combustion chamber, which could cause a smoky exhaust. Or if the piston rings are too wide, then it could scrape up the side of the cylinders and cause your engine to fail. Now, because I haven't bought new piston rings, we're gonna be using the piston rings which have already come out of that cylinder block, which were on the old pistons, if that makes sense. But there is a way of measuring them to make sure that they're gonna work. Here is the top piston ring, which goes on the top of the piston. Not this piston though, because this is the one that we're not putting in. We're gonna measure the gap between there and there, and when it's inside there, it should read, according to our workshop manual, manual which we got off Google, between 0.18 millimeters and 0.30 millimeters. So the way we do that is squash the piston ring into the cylinder, and then to make sure that it's nice and centralized, we use the old piston to push it down into place. Then we're gonna use a feeler gauge to check the measurement of the piston ring gap. 